Hi, we're here today with Andy Joachim. She is a recent graduate from UT Computer Science. Congratulations, Andy. And she has recently moved to Chicago to start her first job at Avant. Hi everybody, my name is Andrea Joachim and I have just graduated, I was a class of 2020, computer science graduate of the University of Texas at Austin's computer science department. And I'm here to talk to you about a lot of things today. You just graduated, congratulations. And I did, congratulations, thank you. Um, I'm very, very humbled, I'm very, um, proud to say that I, I was able to attend the University of Texas at Austin and, and be a part of its extensive family. So I moved to the great windy city of Chicago, Illinois to become the bridge between a standard software engineer who may just be like programming different types of features and traditional security engineers who break things and by break things I don't mean like break physical things I mean like hack into things and find vulnerabilities and so I'm by being the bridge between them I'm developing tools that can help them both and therefore learn from both sides so I think that that's really exciting. Were you programming at your new job and do you know anything about the platform or languages? Yes, I will be programming probably in something like Python um, and as for platform, definitely touching things like Amazon Web Services and Docker, but as of now that's all that I know. So, Do you have any idea what the culture will be like in your new workplace in light of working at home and the COVID situation? Yeah, <laughs> that is a little bit more complicated than traditionally, than it traditionally would be. I think, I think the culture will be different, but the culture that I've so far been exposed to has been one that's extremely patient, kind, and willing to get me what I need. So uh, in terms of my equipment, when like changing addresses and making sure that I take proper inventory of the boxes, they've all been so incredibly kind um, and helping me get started. So hopefully once I actually get started, which should be pretty soon now, um, I will have more to report back for you. What was it like for you to move from Austin to Chicago in the midst of the pandemic? So <laughs> apparently nobody really talks about this, but moving is like one of the most intense things any adult human being could do, regardless of whether or not you are in a pandemic. Um, like the, the prospect of counting all, like taking a look at all of your stuff and packing it away into boxes and shipping it to some location that's probably not like you then have to unpack nobody tells you that all the work you do before the move is only half of it you have w like more than half of the work when you're done um when you're done and so i think it's really just one foot in front of the other uh and that goes with any type of moving whether or not you're going to do this during a pandemic um <laughs> i definitely recommend making lists be like giving yourself time taking breaks Overall, it was not as bad as I felt like it was, but moving in general is, is definitely one where you need to exercise patience and kindness to yourself. Um, Did you participate in any internships while you were at UT, and what was that like? Um, I actually participated in one every year that I attended UT. The first one, uh, like each one was a brilliant experience. They were all, of course, a little bit different for me, so my first one was an artificial intelligence internship, and that was one in which I did theoretical computer science, which instead of programming in something like Python or Java, I programmed in like upper order, like higher order predicate calculus, and where I worked on reasoning systems for an artificial intelligence. And so like uh, the artificial intelligence should be able to look at a, man, a person who's identifying as a man and be able to say that that person is not somebody's wife because he identifies as a man. So um, I got to work on some really, really cool stuff on that one. And then my second one was a cybersecurity internship with Comcast. Um, and I got to do a whole really cool surveillance project with them. I think that one may have been my favorite because 
I had no prior experience with any of the technologies or like thought processes that I needed before. It's like I, <laughs> before I went in, like when I went in on the first day, my boss brought me into this room and then pitched this project to me, which of course I was super excited to leap at an opportunity to touch things I had never touched before, but go get, uh, like get, I had touched to do projects on for school, but not to develop with and make a tool or feature work with. Um, and then also like writing a server side program. I had never done any of this. And by the end I was able to say that I mastered Go enough to finish this project and demo it to demo all of my deliverables to a lot of vice presidents sitting at a really long table. So I think that one was just overall a lot of pressure but a lot of reward. Um, and then my last one was one with Cisco and I actually worked all through my senior year with them. And that one I was on the firewall team so technically still security but not as not as hands-on. Um, and I got to do a different type of surveillance where I was instead watching my team and and what the team and how the firewall product was changing and how it affects the tools that we use as an organization. Uh, that one was also brilliant. I think that one was definitely the internship in which I became more proficient in Python. Uh, that it, it really brought an appreciation to the, how powerful that language is and and stuff like that. But I think my experiences overall, the things that if someone else were were to ask me what like what are some things that you want to look for in, in another internship. Mentorship is definitely very, very important. Um, I can't tell you how many times I walked up to my manager and with just extremely, <laughs> like it may, it, had I just read a little bit more, I probably would have been able to find it, but patience and kindness and mentorship and having being put in an environment where people want to see you grow is definitely what you should look for in an internship. This is your time and you should prioritize what is most important to you. What was your experience like studying computer science at UT in Austin? My CS experience at UT was so cool. <laughs> it's like crazy and so cool. I think I got in touch with so many people from all different walks of life that made me look at what I love doing in a different way and then made me look at what I didn't like doing in a different way. Um, they, I learned how to work in a team. I learned how to work with and respect like what other people may need if you're working in a team. Um, it's just overall a definitely like a really great experience. I think the professors, the advisors, everybody wants to see you succeed and they're going to give you what you need for that. You just got to tell them. What student organizations were you involved with while you were in college? Primarily it was CS Ambassadors and um, Pod. So CS Ambassadors, if you, you were all in high school, so you might actually come in contact with formerly me, but presently a CS Ambassador if you come tour um, UTCS. And so that is a brilliant group of excellent student leaders who like we'll take you around the building and tell you fun facts and also how you can get more involved. Uh, I loved, loved, loved working with CS Ambassadors. I think such an excellent group of engineers and also very nice people. Um, and as for Pod, I do want to talk a little bit about Pod. I worked primarily with Pod right after I finished the first semester of my freshman year. That was actually when I was hired to be a Pod mentor and then I my junior year, I believe, became the lead mentor for the traditional program. And that traditional is just the traditional track you can take versus the honors track, which could have accelerated courses or privatized courses. Um, so yeah, so I think that one was brilliant because I was able to tell people and teach people what I wish I knew coming in. Um, and it helped them hopefully along the way. What did you do in high school that helped you to prepare for coming to UT Computer Science? So I took 
as many CS classes as I possibly could have, um, which in my school district was two. So by the end of my sophomore year, I had finished everything that my school district would give me for computer science. And it was two years of fundamental Java, and I didn't know where to go next. So. I then found programs like Code Academy or Hour of Code or Code.org that had outreach modules for people who wanted to learn more about computer science and technology. And so I started doing that and I actually found First Bytes, which is the one of the great outreach summer camps that this department holds. Um, and I was able to participate myself and then come back and work the next year. So um, anything that you can do to keep yourself interested in technology that's all I can say like if you find a group or a camp or a program that you can be a part of that brings technology into someone else's life and that reaffirms what you enjoy about it there's no other feeling like it Andy what advice do you have for high school students that are wanting to go into computer science I want everyone to give as many different fields in computer science a chance or technology a chance. Um, I think a lot of the times people or developers are pushed into specializing into one field without getting a taste of, of how vast the industry of computer science is and computer programming. Had I wanted a job not in security, I could have gone into gaming and game management or just management um, or even contracting. And so you have so many different options. There's bound to be something that you'll enjoy. So I highly recommend as many fields as you can get your hands on, definitely, definitely spend some time with it. You could end up not liking it and that, that's that's totally fine. Or you can end up loving it, like me and security. Um, so you can end up not liking it like me and research or me and security. Um, so You seem to have a lot of advice. Do you have any more that you'd like to share? I think do it. Just do it. And the most important thing is that you should be patient with yourself. You should be kind to yourself and you should believe in yourself because I have not met someone who does not have the capacity to excel in a field like this. And I hope all of you have the support that you need and the resources you need to become great engineers because I know all of you have that ability and you have that skill it is just if you want to try it you got to go out there and do it I think I wish you the best of luck if you definitely want to get into some type of CS there are so many different resources out there to try and help you get started there are different experts willing to talk about their fields there are engineers like me willing to connect with you on LinkedIn or email or anything and will guide you through your first experiences as a developer as a software engineer uh, and and push you to do really great things so you've definitely got what it takes. Definitely just want to say that. We'd love to hear some about the experience you had with security in particular. So would you elaborate on that for us, please? I would say that I've done plenty of work in different parts, in different sectors of security, um, such as surveillance, which could be broken down into surveillance against um, like external customers and also developers. So. At that favorite internship that I talked about at Comcast, I had a surveillance project in Go in which I wrote a tool that would scan every single line of every code base inside of their GitHub Enterprise. And I found anything under the sun that shouldn't be there. So like common hosts, IPs, usernames, passwords. I did brilliantly fun, like that, that sector of security is super fun and really interesting because you find out how you can find things, why you should find them, and what tools you can use to make a more secure product. 
Um, so I've done that. I've also done primarily back-end engineering for security companies. So when I worked at Cisco, I was on their firewall team and did a different type of surveillance project where I was looking at all of the new features and builds that were coming in every day and finding out which features were being changed and what else on the product that changed. So, or that changes. And so, for example, if, uh, like, let's say that there is an object and its child is like a network object. So a network object is a type of object and a firewall object is a type of object. And so if you change something in firewall object, does that affect network object or how does it affect everything that is underneath that section of the tree, of the ancestral tree? And so I did a lot of cool work with that. I think surveillance and security engineering in which you create uh, new features and secure features is where my happiness is in CS. I think it's super fun. I think it's more fun than breaking things, which is like another type of security um, in which you utilize a lot of mathematics, you utilize a lot of th theoretical CS, and you break things, like you use hash functions, which could be encrypting functions, or you find a binary and a backdoor into a, like a whole file of usernames and passwords that you could steal. So I think most pressing security issues and concerns for companies, um, primarily I've seen encrypting and privatizing data. That could be personal data, such as like which websites you visit, what you buy. Um, I know a lot of larger companies, such as like Facebook or Google, may have issues with um, keeping your like personal data that is tied to your account kind of in the same regard. So I think I think keeping personally identifiable information for any type of customer is an extremely important concern for any company. I think that should be one of the number one concerns um, and definitely given priority because every security company I've worked at, that is number one, what they're chasing their tails around all the time. I don't know if I can go ahead and do this, but I, I do want to. And if this is better than my other pep talk, change it out. <laughs> I totally trust you. But something I did want to say to all of you is that I hope you are proud of trying something new, like computer science, if you're new here welcome. If it's your second time around back, welcome back. But I think this, these outreach programs are such a brilliant way to bring other minds into an ever-expanding field. And I never want one of you to feel like you don't have what it takes to excel in a field such as this one. And so Moving forward as a high school student, trying to try new things and getting into your next part of life, believe in yourself, be patient with yourself, and take it one step at a time. Andrea, thank you so much for sharing your energy, your enthusiasm, your encouraging words with us today. We so appreciate your time and you, and I'm so happy to see you again. It was very, very lovely to talk to all of you. 